Hi, I'm Stephen Birch with Trilogy Visual Media. What I wanted to do with this video is, now that I've had an opportunity to use the Blackmagic Studio Camera 4Ks, give you my opinions and uh, some of the cool and not so cool features and functions that I found with the camera. Uh, it's definitely by far, uh, I don't mean to make this a super negative video because I am loving the camera, but there are some stuff that I feel you guys should be aware of um, before you decide to purchase or not purchase the camera. Okay, so one of the things that, that struck me as odd right away is the USB port for upgrades. One is that it's virtually impossible to get open. Um, and once you do get it open, which I just had it open, yeah, so you can see if you're going to do upgrades, you really have to dig at this thing, which is one of the reasons I wanted to show it to you because after you're digging at it and you get it open, you have this kind of gaping hole open port. I don't know if you can see it here, um, which is odd because usually they, they mount these kind of on, on the surface level. And my fear is that you can see all these electronics in here, that after you're picking at this thing for so long, this is gonna come off in maybe six months, seven months or whatever, and you're gonna have this exposed area in there. So that's something to watch out for. Um, it'd be nicer if this was easier to get on and off. Once you have it off, usually it comes off, but if it gets pushed down in there nice and good, you're gonna have to dig at it for a little while. Um, Another thing that struck me as super odd is that, if you haven't noticed already, there's no place to plug this in. Uh, you, in order to provide power outside of the battery power that comes with it, in order to provide power to it, you have to use this big old long Medusa looking thing. Now I understand that this, is, this has a lo adds a lot of features and functions to the camera, so it's, it's, it's very cool and needed, and it's nice that they didn't try to pile everything on here and kept this light. But uh, really, the ability to plug it in uh, just kind of seems odd. So in order to plug this in, you have to push this guy in here. Another thing that, that um, struck me as weird is that this, this cable, it, it looks like, um, it looks like a, you know, Blackmagic usually does everything right. They, they, they package everything right. Everything looks good. It feels good. It's solid. But this is kind of uh, hokey. Um, looks like a, you know, a cheap knockoff version of what the cable should have done, uh, should have looked like. Um, especially because we have, we have three of these now and some of them, the, the molding on the screws um, aren't, aren't even formed all the way. They're actually melted across and I had to dig them out in order to use a screwdriver, which also leads me to the point that you need a screwdriver. These are hard to turn. So um, once you get it in, once you get it in there, you got to turn these guys and after one or two turns, you're, you're really trying to crank that in there. So typically I'll go get a screwdriver if I'm going to use these and plug them in or, or in, and screw them in. And uh, so I'm trying to get it off here. So, um, so that's that. That struck me as really odd that you cannot plug this guy in without lugging this big old thing around. Even if you're not using any of the other functions on there, you have to have it with you to plug in the camera. Okay, so let's go through the menu. Plug this guy in and uh, let's see here, get out of here. Okay, so uh, nice display if you're used to the, the, the Blackmagic 4K productions or any of the other cameras that I've, I've encountered. Um, you, have, uh, you have your typical uh, audio meter, shutter, uh, f-stop, we have gain now, white balance, your battery usage, and your, your resolution. Also your camera name or number. Um, so I'm going to hit menu once, and let's start from the top. So first function uh, menu, oh, I wanted to also mention, sorry before, to, to get sidetracked, these buttons. Uh, the placement of the buttons, um, it, it gets difficult to to sit and, and push on these, especially after the camera's mounted. Usually you have the camera facing forward and the video assist looking at you, so you kind of have to reach around and start pressing these buttons. And I think I have medium-sized hands, but it's difficult to, to find the buttons, uh, especially if you can't see them, without pressing another one, because um, they're, they're really, really close together. The power button is indented, 
which is nice. So at least you have some sort of guidance if, you, if you're not able to look at these. But even when I'm looking at them, and then I'm looking over to, to see where I'm going, I find them kind of just, you got to really press them. Okay, so let's go back into the menu. I'm going to hit menu, let's clear out. So I'm hitting menu once, and then I'm going to go down to, we get to camera settings. Um, here's where you control the resolution. Um, right now we're shooting in 4K at 24 frames per second. I'm going to hit set to get into the submenu, and then the down arrows is where you can control the gain, detail, um, auto exposure settings, and uh, see what that looks like. Hit set again, and I'm going to put it on manual trigger. Uh, I put it on manual trigger because I want to be able to control the f-stop of the camera. If it's on any of the autos, or well, outside of iris, um, if it's on the other two autos, the, the shutter and iris and iris and shut, uh, sh shutter, you cannot control the f-stop of the camera. It's kind of odd. Um, let's go back here. So we have typical white balance and shutter speed. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to hit menu one more time to exit out of the submenu and go back up here and then hit the down arrow to move left, which is kind of weird. Um, here we have uh, auto gain control input, um, your microphone level, input level, output. If you're used to the Blackmagic production or any of the other Blackmagic cameras, that should look pretty common to you. Uh, monitoring. Uh, if you have your HDMI overlays on, then obviously you're, you, if you're going out to a video assist or anything out, HDMI out, you're going to get your overlays um, recorded. So you typically want to leave those off um, in, this in this case. Oops. Um, hit set one more time. Um, focus peaking, I'm leaving off and zebra off because obviously I have a, a video assist, which I've done a, another video for. You can check out where I go over the functionality of this. This comes with focus peaking uh, and zebra uh, as well as guides and stuff. So I leave those off. And the tally light. Tally light's pretty cool. If you're using a switcher, oops, I'm going to hit menu down. Um, if you're using a switcher, you get a uh, tally light. So if the switcher is talking to the camera, if you're using the SDI input and out, or output and input to control the camera from the ATM switcher, um, this turns red when that camera is active. For example, the wide angle that I'm looking at now has the red light on and the close up. It does not because I'm using the, the switcher to run the wide. Um, it's a little low. If you have a big, big lens and you're, you're looking to use this tally light, you may want to find another way or something else because if you have a Canon lens and a, um, some sort of matte box, uh, you're not going to be able to see it. But it is pretty cool, definitely cool. Also, um, another function that these cameras do um, is talk back if you have the, the back end functionality. So when we get into audio, um, you'll see here, menu, down. Um, you have setup, so you have camera number, which is important if you're using a switcher because the switcher uses this number to know which camera to talk to when you're controlling the color and gain and fun camera functions on the switcher itself. Um, what else? The, oops. Um, you have here your reference, uh, reference source external, um, your reference line, line timing. Ah, so that's if you're using a, um, a clock, an external reference to clock everything. And you have headset level mic and uh, mic mic program mix, which will allow you to mix the um, microphone coming in and also what you're getting from the, the tally. Um, uh, or talk back, I should say, sorry. Um, what else? I think that is about it. We'll go into remote settings. And here's where you can tell the camera um, and <clears throat> which, which the, you know, if you're utilizing these and you have special uh, remote controls, um, which functions will control which. And uh, this is an area that I'm not familiar with. Uh, we do not have, uh, currently do not have 
any um, drones or anything, but it's definitely something very cool about this camera. Um, and I know you can, there's, other, there's other hardware that will allow you to utilize these as well as pan and tilt, um, which you can also control via this guy. So there's a lot of functionality in here that I know we probably won't tap here at Trilogy, but um, uh, it's, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment area below and uh, have a great day.